Chapter 7 In Another Bedroom Danny awoke with the booming sound of his ears and the drunk, savagely pettish voice of crying hoarsely, Come out here and take your medicine! I'll find you! I'll find you! But now the booming has only has raised in his heart, and the only voice of the night is far away the sound of a police siren. He lay in his bed motionly, looking up at the wind surged shadows of all the leaves in his bedroom ceiling. They were tw um, twinned seriously together, making the shapes look like vines and creeps in a jungle, and like patterns woven into the nap on the thick carpet. He was uh, the clad of Dr. Drain and pajamas, but between the pajama suit and the skin of grown more, the apparent of perspiration, Tony, he whispered, you there? No answered. He slipped out of bed and panted silently to the window and looked at the arrow of the street. It was still and silent. It was two in the morning. There was nothing out there. The empty sidewalks drifted with fallen leaves and parked cars and a long next street light. The corner of the, of the cliff of Bryce's gas station. There were hooded ta at top of motionless stands. He, the street light he looked like a monster in the space uh, show. He looked up at the street both ways, straining his eyes for Tony's sight, back in, from, back in form, but there was no one there. The wind sighed through the trees, and the fallen leaves rattled the deserted walks around the hubs, the hubcaps of parked cars. It was a faint sorrow sound, and the boy thought he might be the only one in the boulder awake enough to hear it. The only human became be mean yeah, at last. There was no way of knowing when my well, as a night, sinking hungrily through the shadows, watching and and sensing the breeze. I'll find you. I'll find you, Tony. He whispered again, without with that much um, hope. Only the wind. Oh, spoke back, gathering more strongly this time, scattering leaves across uh, uh, the sloping roof you know, below uh, though his window. Some of them slipped into the ring outer, and they uh, tried da like tried dancers. Danny, Dane, he looked at the sound of a familiar voice that carried out the window. His small hands were still. The sound of Tony's voice of the old night seemed to have come slightly and secretly alive. Whispering, even the wind quieted again. The leaves were still, and the shadows had stopped and moving. He thought he saw a darker shadow standing at the bus stop at the, the a block down. But it was hard to tell if it was a real thing or an eye trick. Don't go, Danny. And then the wind gusted again, making him squint, and the shadow by the bus stop was gone. If he ever had been there at all, he stood in the window. A minute? An hour? It came some time longer. There was no more. At the least, he crept back, back into his bed and pulled the blankets and watched the shadows thrown by the alien street light and turned it into the singing jungle of a flesh-eating pan of plants. And they wanted only to slip around them, squeeze the life out of him, and drag him down the blackness where he, where one sinister word flashed in red, red rum.